From Arizona, hello, Dr. Craig. Thank you, first of all, for your amazing work. It's so great to see you debate and defend the faith. I know it has been of great assistance to me in solidifying my faith. I just graduated from college, and recently a group of my friends and I decided to start reading On Guard. We have just started, and even though I've looked through a lot of your work, I'm having some trouble answering a question that may be brought up in our next meeting. It concerns the Leibniz argument. On page 61, you say, Now, it seems obvious that a different collection of fundamental particles could have existed instead of the collection that does exist. Unquote. But how can we show that this is the case? Isn't it just as plausible that quarks or strings have to exist in every possible world because without them the universe could not exist? In addition, I am a bit confused on the beginning of the universe in relation to this. Did quarks or strings come into existence at the Big Bang? If so, then that would seem to say that they don't exist necessarily and back up the point that the universe isn't necessarily existent. But if the singularity had quarks or strings in it, then that seems to say that they do exist necessarily and refute the need for God. I'm obviously a layman in this, so I'm sorry for my ignorance, but I'm confusing or misunderstanding Big Bang cosmology. Any help in understanding this argument would be much appreciated. Mm -hmm. Let's back up and understand what this inquiry is about. In the Leibnizian cosmological argument, it's claimed that if the universe has an explanation of its existence, then that explanation is God. And although I know of no contemporary atheist who says this, a person could deny that by saying that the explanation of the universe is that it exists by a necessity of its own nature. That is to say that the universe is a metaphysically necessary being. And so I think we ought to think about that alternative. Is the universe metaphysically necessary in its existence? And I give a couple of arguments as to why it seems to me that the universe is not metaphysically necessary. And the first argument is based upon the composition of the universe. Just as a pair of socks would not be the same pair of socks if it were made of silk rather than made of wool, so it seems to me that a universe composed of a different collection of quarks wouldn't be the same universe as a universe made up of a, a, a different collection of, of quarks or fundamental particles. And therefore, the person who thinks that the universe is metaphysically necessary has to say that just this collection of quarks exists with metaphysical necessity. And that just seems outrageous to me, to think that all of the quarks in the universe are metaphysically necessary beings. and couldn't have been replaced by other quarks. So I don't have any argument beyond that other than the fact that that just seems modally obvious that the quarks and strings in the universe don't exist with metaphysical necessity. I suppose one thing you could appeal to would be modern scientific theories in which the universe is not made up of quarks. Say it's made up of strings instead. In other words, it's, it's very easy to craft alternative physical models that are different. And so the proponent of the view that the universe is metaphysically necessary would have to say that these other physical models are, in fact, metaphysical impossibilities. And that just seems wrong. They, they do seem perfectly possible, not only metaphysically, but physically. So I think that the person who is taking this line is taking a really radical line in thinking that all these fundamental particles exist with metaphysical necessity. And that's probably why nobody adopts this view. Now, in addition to that, if the universe did have a beginning, then as he quite rightly says, that means the universe is not necessary in its existence, but it's contingent. And it's of no help to try to say these quarks or strings existed in the initial singularity. In the first place, they didn't. They don't exist until later. But even more fundamentally, the singularity doesn't exist necessarily. It is not something that is eternal in the past, but is vanishingly brief, existing only for an instant and then passing away. So 
I think the demonstration that the universe began to exist really pulls the rug out from underneath the person who would assert that the universe exists necessarily.